Who in your life today are you trying to please? Who in your life are you willing to do all kind of things for you to keep them around you? Look, sometimes in life, there are some people you have to let them go if peace is all that you want. And also, there are some others you have to swallow your pride, you have to swallow your ego and keep them around you because your destiny depends on them. Because you see, you are an average of who you spend most of your time with. If you hang out with three idiots, you didn't count well. There are four. Or if you hang out with five, ambitious, goal-driven, focused, oriented, wise men, you didn't count well. There are six. Because eventually, this is what will happen. By time, you will become like them. For an example, I hope all of us today, we know Martin Luther King. The Lutherans could not see beyond the Luther. Even Christians, they cannot see beyond Christ. It is very difficult for you to see beyond your master. It's really very difficult for you to see beyond your friends and the circle. Because in around the circle, at the end of the day, there must be something. You are discussing you guys as a circle. So it's hard to see beyond these people. In the next five years, I promise you, you will be the same person you are today. Unless two things, the books you read and the group you keep. Let me tell you a short story. Here's 2017 and we are in high school. My friends and I used to compete who has a nice smartphone during those days. Uh, I remember I had a Samsung S3, my friend Polycap had a Oppo, and the other guy had a Techno. So in 2018, I managed to sell the Samsung S3 to a guy called Elmer. And Polycap, his brother made it to the US. So in 2018, Pulika has an iPhone, his brother gifted him from the US. And me at that time, I have a Microsoft Windows phone, of which I hated it. Which some of you who have used the Windows phone, you understand what I say. I hated it. It was hard to use. We used to compete all times. Not from a standpoint of envy or jealousy. No, it was not jealousy. It was like a stimulation. It was like an encouragement. Once this one has done this, you try. To do the same or to do even better than them so that stimulation kept going on and on and on until we finished high school and here in 2019 i get into college and here in college i met another set of group i met a different set of group with a different mindset a total different mindset and here i got into another level from competing who has a nice smartphone into competing who has a nice room in college was a nice outlook, was a nice girlfriend, was a nice laptop. And I remember here in college, I met Brian. Brian had an HP laptop. On the other side, there was Roke. Roke had a ThinkPad, Lenovo, and I did not have one. So each and every time I was hanging out with this group, I was like, I need a laptop. Because each and every time we were hanging out, there was something we were discussing as a group, as a circle, and I did not want it to be left outside. So I had to figure out what I had to do for me to own a laptop. And later on, I managed to purchase one, the one that I'm using until now. So you see, this is the benefit of hanging out with friends who are better than you. Because what they will do, they will compel you. If you ever find yourself, you are the greatest person in the room, I tell you a fact, you are in a wrong room. Go outside there to a room where you don't belong and stick by there. Take time, learn the basics, learn the principles, learn the laws and stick by there. Yes, you might feel irrelevant. Yes, you will feel you don't belong there, but there is where you belong. If you want to raise your mindset, stop having a fixed mindset. Go to where you don't belong. I didn't stop there. COVID-19 happened. And in 2020, all schools were closed. I was home. And here again, I met a group of bikers. Uh, one of them was my cousin, of course, Darlington. Another one was Andrew, the guy I used to sell the meat with in the butchery when I was not in school. So when I was hanging out with these friends, Darlington became the first person to purchase a motorbike. He went and bought 
uh, it was Honda 125 cc. Later on, my friend Andrew goes for a Boxer 125 cc. So every time I was chilling with these guys, I was feeling uncomfortable. I was feeling like I can't do without a bike. I really necessarily I didn't need a bike, but I was like, I can't do with a bike. And in my 21st birthday, I went and bought a bike. I bought a Sonlink 150cc. So we got into a leverage and I was like a little bit than them. So what I'm trying to say, guys, always chill with people who are better than you. Chill with people who are great than you. Chill with people who are smarter than you because they will improve you. So today we are going to discuss about six ways on how mindset are formed. I will begin by defining the mindset. And the word mindset, it comes from the word mind. A mind is a powerful tool that determines who you are as a person, that determines how you think and why you think the way you think. It determines how you view yourself as well as the world. So in other words, a mindset is a set of beliefs, ideologies, and thoughts that influence how you handle any given situation. It literally dictates your personality. So, number one, how mindset are formed is genes, purely genetics. I'll tell you this, whoever you choose to sleep with, whoever you choose to have a child with, has an impact to the child you'll bring into the cosmos. These are facts, they are not assumptions. This is a well done research and I have statistical evidence to back up this statement. Because I understand some of the viewers are so controversial, they will be like, where is the evidence, where is the evidence? And that's what I want to tell you. In biology we learned that after a woman conceiving the seed from a man, and I mean a man because we've seen all kinds of things, more so in the western culture, we've seen animals getting in contact with women. All these things, they can't go forth because God is a wise God and through his wisdom, he meant business when he said, go out there and fill the earth and it has to be a male and a female. So, leave about this ignorance that is happening right away. The only woman who conceived without a seed from a man was Mary, the mother of Jesus. But the rest of other women, it has to be a man seed. And after conceiving, the zygote will form. And later, the zygote will become a fetus. And during this stage, the fetus, what happens inside the fetus, the nervous system forms first. And here is where our focus is. So it's up to you the way you'll understand. And inside the fetus, the first system that forms is a nervous system. And the nervous system contains of the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. I hope you understand. The blood that is inside you is more older than you. If you're 20 years old, let's say, for an example, the blood is inside you is more than 20 years old. Because the blood you have is the blood you received from your mother. Because in the male semen, inside a man's sperm, the sperm does not carry blood. It carries genes. It carries DNA. And go through his wisdom, created blood only once. And this blood is the one that is recycling. And we understand blood is life. So that's why women are considered as they give life. The genes affect the mindset of the person. That's why people, they literally behave like their parents. Number two is culture. People from different cultures, they tend to have different mindsets. What they believe in, what they eat, what they find taboo to do or to speak in public, how they handle situations, how they solve problems. For an example, from where I come from in Kenya, when you nod your head, you are disagreeing. But if you find an Indian nodding the head, that is the way of agreeing, meaning like he has agreed. So. Once you hang out with these people, you're going to learn like they have a different mindset. They have a different spending habit. They have a different way of doing things. So your culture literally has an impact to your mindset. 
has an impact to the way you view the world, has an impact to the way you respond to problems, and so on and so on. Number three is past experience. A past experience of a person can really dictate how they behave. What has happened into your life has an impact on your mindset. My family and I were victims of the 2007 post-election violence in Kenya. I was seven years old. I remember until today. I remember a certain day I was very sick and my dad had to take me to hospital. I had chicken pox. The outbreak of chicken pox was very severe during that time. On our way to the hospital, it was around 10 o'clock and I remember my dad covering my eyes. You could see a human body thrown across, across the roads, there blood everywhere. And that experience literally affected me. I remember I stumbled a human finger and my mind was like, I had a lot of questions inside my mind that even my dad could not answer. I had to undergo a lot of sessions for me to forget these experiences. So these people who have undergone severe challenges, who have undergone uh, miseries and problems, extreme challenges, extreme problems, these people, they seem to be unbogable because they have a kind of mindset that whatever they face, they have an ability to overcome it because they already have a reputation of overcoming it. And also there are some people, because of their past experience, it's hard for them to face the reality. They were scared. Maybe they are fearing. That's why you can find somebody today, they cannot love again. They cannot trust because they were heartbroken there before. So your past experience can affect your mindset, can affect how you view things, can affect how you behave, they can affect how you solve problems, they can really affect your spending habit among many, many other issues. Because today we see there are some people who cannot trust again. So you find that they are in a dilemma. They don't know how to respond. They don't know what to say because they are like confusing. Is this person going to hurt me again? Is this person trying to play with my emotions? Is this person trying to do so and so? So your past experience has an impact to the way you view the world, has an impact to your own mindset. Number four, what we are going to talk about is family backgrounds. The family where you come from. And here I'm going to say something. In this situation, I'm not sarcastic. I'm so respectful and liberal. I'm not trying to play with somebody's emotion. And I'm really so sorry to say this. Because there are some people from the families where they come from, they don't have a way of communication. Only the way they communicate is through disagreement, is through conflict, is, is through shouting here and there. Let's say for an example, a father is a drunkard and when this man arrives at home, all he knows is shouting, all he knows is violence, even fighting a small child of five years old or two years old. So these children, once they grow up, you find like they've never experienced love, they don't understand love, all they know is violence, they live in fear. And these are the people, once they get out there, they get it hard to interact with other people. They don't understand love. They can't trust. They are always in fear. And for you who have children, you should know this, that the way you handle your family, the way you handle your situation back at home, it really has a very huge impact to the people that you are raising. Show them love. Once you show them love, while they grow up, these are the people who become open-minded. These are the people who become freely. They communicate freely. They interact with people freely. Another point that you're going to talk about is the level of exposure. The level of exposure. I'll use an example. Imagine an individual who have been raised in one village and he managed to go to school in the same village he graduated from primary school in the same village. He got to high school in the same, same village. And maybe he finished high school. He decided to marry. And there he went to the next village and married from the next village. 
Now you come to find that such kind of person, his mindset is fixed. This person is very rare for him to know what is happening in the real world, what is happening out there, because his mindset is kept somewhere like in a cocoon. You understand? Once you travel the world, your eyes began to open. You began to understand things differently. You began to see a lot of things. You meet different people from different socioeconomical backgrounds. You interact with them and you end up learning a lot of things. So I'll encourage you, whenever you ever get a chance to travel the world, go out there, travel the world, meet people, interact with people. Don't be scared about anything. When I was a little boy, I had a lot of fascinations, how the world looks out there. I had a lot of imaginations. I spent a lot of time watching movies because I really wanted to know how the world looks outside the confines of my simple and happy background. And these fascinations are the ones that led me to Qatar. Because I was like, how do people do things? Why do they think the way they think? How do they solve problems? And I was like, I need to know these things. I need to meet people. I need to meet different people. And this is why I was so motivated that no matter what, I'm going to travel the world. And so on, I'm going to travel the world more so the way I want. Because by this way, I will learn a lot, I will interact with people, and I will do a lot of things. Another point is association. Who you associate with, who you choose to hang out with, who is your circle. I'll tell you this, your network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth. The people you hang out around with, they are your mindset. You cannot call yourself a millionaire if the people you hang around with, they are not millionaires, they are still beggars. You are not in that level. Because I hope you understand, a millionaire is not a person who has one million in the bank account. Or a millionaire is not a person who have just won a, a lottery. A millionaire is a person, they have the thinking capacity to hold such amount. And around them, they have a system and a structure on how to re replenish, on how to recycle this amount of money. And also, they have relationships and associations of people, millionaires. If your circle, uh, they are still beggars, and you, you have managed to win a lottery, you have one million in your bank account, you are not a millionaire. Because this is the fact, we've seen people who have won lottery, a lot of money, but they end up after two years, after three years, they end up getting zero. They end up getting back to where they were because their mindset, their way of thinking, their thinking patterns does not allow them to hold such amount. Their thinking patterns limits them, limits them. Once you get this money, his mindset is telling him, go to the club. Uh, organize a bash, do this and do this. So these people, they can have the money, but their mindset, their thinking pattern is not in that level. So men today who never used to beat their wives until they started hanging out with the wrong people, until they started going outside there and receiving wrong teachings. One day I was in a club watching a football match while I was enjoying my drink. I was taking a Del Monte. I don't take alcohol. Notice this. And while I was in the club watching football, from the other side, there was a group of men quite at an age of 30, 40, in between age of 40. One of them was saying, you mean you don't beat your wife? And the other one replied, no, I don't. Why should I? And the man insisted, you are the people who are spoiling your wives. You should. And I was shocked, by the way. I was shocked. I had to turn my head to see this man. And I was, uh-huh, this is how you spoil each other. So, I'm telling you something, guys. Your association, the people you hang out around with, 
these are the people who will shape you or who will downgrade you. And I've come to realize one thing. These are the kind of people they will take you out, they will buy you alcohol, they will buy you bang, they will buy you all those kinds of things. But remember one thing, they can't buy you food. Why should a person buy you alcohol but they cannot buy you food? They know what they are doing. They are in a mission and their mission is pulling you down, putting you into their mindset level so that you cannot see beyond them. If you find a friend who is willing 100% to buy you alcohol and one day he cannot will to buy you food, the food that is giving you energy so that you may think, these people, they have a mission. And you better figure out what their mission is. I tell you, it won't be for your good. It will be for their good. They want to spoil you. They want to put you in a place where they can easily control you. They will feed you alcohol. The next thing you'll find, they are sleeping with your wives. Because they want to put you somewhere and control you. Some of you may ask how to improve your mindset. And here I tell you how. Number one. Listen to your inner voice. Follow your intuition and guts. Human being, the way God created you, there are three dimensions that makes a human being, which are the spirit, the body, and the soul. The spirit is what God put in you because God is a spirit. And the good book do say we are made in a resemblance of God. What does that mean? If God is a spirit, human beings, they are also spirits. So, the first thing, a human being, they consist of a spirit. Number two is the soul. What is the soul? The soul consists of your mind. It consists of your will and your emotions. Hope you understand this. And number three is the body, the physical body, the flesh. And the body, God made the body to do biological functions. To eat, reproduction, uh, digestion, reproduction, respiratory, all those systems, they are in the flesh. So, always listen to your intuition. Always listen to what your spirit is trying to tell you. Because the spirit is more important in you without anything. That's why you see, when people die, what happens is God takes the spirit. And once God takes the spirit, the body remains without a spirit. And since the body cannot survive without the spirit, that's when people die and we bury them. Because the body will never function without the spirit. Notice this. Number two, when you find someone better than you, sit down and learn. Swallow your ego, swallow your pride, pay the price and get knowledge. Listen to their words. Listen to what they are going to tell you. Because there are people in this world who have spent years in pain building their credibility, protecting their reputation, building their influence. For an example, I know a guy today who can play a very good football than Cristiano Ronaldo. But what makes the difference is because Ronaldo has spent years building his reputation. He has spent years building his credibility. And that's why you see whenever he moves, influence follows him. And look at what Messi is doing in Inter Miami. Messi moves to Inter Miami and what follows next, the Instagram followers of the team began to increase. The influence of the team began to increase. The reputation of the team began to increase. The worth of the club began to increase the market value of the club began to increase and these are the people of influence because today i know most of you you have talents than most of the celebrities we have right now then what makes the difference anyway what makes the difference is because it takes more than talent to rise it takes consistency persistency, self-awareness, discipline, perseverance, among many, many other things. So, I'll encourage you guys. There are still more levels to go. There are still more topics to cover. So, what I tell you, please, don't give up. Giving up is an option, but it should not be the first option. So, 
continue pressing, continue persevering when working on your mindset. Once you're faced with a situation to choose between something easy and something challenging, I'll tell you this, go for something challenging. Why? Once you go for something that is challenging, it puts your mind into work. It puts your mind into thinking, how should I figure out? How should I solve this challenge? But if you go for something easy, what happens in your mind? Your mind sleeps. Your mind sleeps because it's something easy. That's why you see some people, once they fail, they go back to their parents. That is not how things are done. Face the reality. Face the challenge head on head and having the mentality to finish strong. No matter what will happen, you are like, I must finish strong in this situation. And once you have that kind of mentality, there is nothing that will bring you down. I remember in 2021 when I was deferring school and I was in that situation when I was asking people, I called my friends and I asked my friend, what should I do? What can I do? School fees was not a problem, but I was uncomfortable. I was, I felt like I'm wasting my time. And in this situation, I was in a dilemma. Should I leave or should I continue with education? And I was like, let me go for this that is challenging. My friend told me, here in college, we have meals, we have parties, we have bash, we have ladies. Why should you go to Qatar? I was like, okay, let me go and see what is there. But today, that is the best decision I've ever made in my life. Because once I got into Qatar, the first thing that happens into my mind, it was exposure, followed by maturity. I began to see things differently. I began to understand different. I began to hang out with people who are not like me. And next, I got the courage. I noticed that there are still a lot of levels to go into, of which when I was in school, I was in my comfort zone. It used to be class, hostel, hostel, class, class, party, party, hostel, hostel, school. So I was in that routine. My mind was in a comfort zone. I could not think beyond that situation. But once I came into Qatar is when I came and I realized, oh my God, there are still levels. There are still things to achieve. There are... So once you face between two situations, one that is easy and one that is challenging. Number one, remember this, choose one that is challenging. Another point, once you hit a bump in a road, don't assume it, learn from it. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this situation? Never assume anything, learn from that situation. When I came to Qatar, I had stereotypes. I had my own stereotypes that most of the people have concerning the people in the Middle East. So I remember getting into work the first day and my boss was giving me the orientation. He was introducing me to the rest of the team. And he was like, this is so-and-so from Nepal. This one is from Philippines. This one is from Bangladesh, from India, from Sri Lanka, from Uganda, you are from Kenya. So inside my mind, I was like, wow, meaning like, I can learn the whole nation, the whole country from these individuals. I came to realize we were more than seven nationalities in that, in that team. So I had to learn how to get along with people very quickly. I had to learn the dynamics of people's background. It forced me to learn how to make friends quickly and so on and so on. Another point, always go for books go for knowledge if you manage to eat three meals a day food is for the stomach books are for the mind feed your mind with books feed your mind with motivation feed your mind with something that is building you because some of you people what you're doing with your mind it's really irrelevant with what you want in life because how can you expect to have a good life and what you're feeding your mind is really irrelevant with the life you want. You are there in explicit content. You are there, the things you're listening into, the things you're seeing. These are the things that are getting into your mind. 
And once they get into your mind, they get down in the subconscious mind. And once they get into the subconscious mind, they become habits. And I hope you understand what it takes to break a habit. It's not easy. It's not a one-day journey to break a habit. It takes a long. So, some of you, before you buy a nice shoe, please, buy a nice book. Go to the library. Go to the church. Go to seminars. Meet people. Interact with people. By that way, you'll be adding value into your life. Because that's all that you need. You don't need a new shoe anyway. You need a book. A book will give you an orientation. A book will give you courage. It will give you a motivation. It will give you strength. It will give you hope. So, before you go for a new shoe, buy a book. Go to the library. Visit a bookshop. Some of you may ask how to improve your mindset. And here I will tell you how. We have different types of mindsets. Different individuals, they have different types of mindset. And today we are going to talk about the main ones, the two main types of mindset, which are the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. The fixed mindset, these are the people who have already made a decision. They have already decided to believe in what they believe in. No matter what you tell them, they cannot change from what they believe in. An example, a good example is a Man United fan that no matter how much they are beaten, no matter how much they lose, they cannot stop believing in Man United. So these kind of people, they have a fixed mindset. A growth mindset, these are the people who are willing they are ready to improve each and every time. You find them, they are doing something. You can't find them that just seated. You find them, they are extending classes, they are extending training, they are extending reading. They are willing to improve each and every day. And by so, in their mind, there is room for expansion. Uh, a fixed mindset, these are the individuals who... They are stick to the past. They are really connected to their past. They don't want to try anything new. They don't want to believe in something new. They don't want to redefine their thinking. They will be like, how did I do? Whereas in the growth mindset, these are the people who are willing. They are willing. They are very persistent. You find like they are doing something because they will be like, how should I do it better next time? How should I improve next time? I'll tell you a story. Here we are four boys in primary school. There was Kelvin, Methuselah, Juma, and I. Competition was really very stiff. We used to compete, we used to lead the class after the examination. Remember very well, after the teacher giving us the results of the examinations we did, we used to sit in a certain corner, the four of us, and compare who did what in a certain subject, who killed it, who, who, who beat it, the other people. And by so, we got ourselves into realization that in social studies, I used to beat all of them. In all the examinations we did, averagely, in social studies, I used to beat all of them. But in mathematics, the three boys used to beat me in mathematics because during those times, I hated maths. I didn't like maths. In other subjects, we used to tie. You understand? We were closing school and on our way home, I remember telling Kelvin that even if the teacher wakes me up 3 o'clock, you cannot beat me in social studies. I'm a dominant in this subject. And Kelvin replied, he told me, Ibrahim, note that when you will be home reading, others will be sleeping, even us will be reading. I was like, no, this thing is mine, man. I'm a dominant in this subject. Nobody will beat me in this subject. But it was very painful when we opened school and we were doing the indexing exams, I swear to God, all the three boys, they showed me fire. In that indexing exams, I took position four. They showed me fire, even on my dominant subject. And this is because I had a fixed mindset. I didn't go there and work hard to protect my reputation. What I did, I went there and relaxed, knowing that I'm a dominant in that field. Remember, I was practicing. David had released a new song featuring Diamond, number one. 
at this time i was busy cramming the song and i forgot doing my assignments i forgot doing my uh, my readings but kelvin he had a growth mindset he was improving gradually he was, and since that day there is no day i beat it kelvin we managed to get into the same high school and kelvin showed me fire since then i tried my best to reach him but i could not reach him and what i'm trying to tell you people is like always get to have a growth mindset a fixed mindset it will make you to feel you don't need to expand you don't need to improve because what happens you will build ego in the small results that you have so how can you distinguish a growth mindset from a fixed mindset here is how number one goals a goal of a fixed mindset these are the people who wants to look good these are the people who wants to look perfect they don't care who they hurt as long as they look good they want to receive the credits they want to receive the applause they want to receive the glory and they are not willing to press for more whereas in the growth mindset these are the people you will find them improving each and every day you will find them doing something you can't find them in a stagnation they are busy doing something these are the people who are willing to improve they extend in classrooms they extend in gym they extend in practice good example is a person like cristiano ronaldo if you saw the video that was trending through the media last month you saw cristiano ronaldo extending in the gym imagine this is a man who has success he has the reputation he has the credibility he has the influence but he was extending in the gym even after the rest of the team had left the gym this tries to tell you that having a growth mindset will take you into places rather than having a fixed mindset number 2 a fixed mindset the, these are the people who see the success of other people like threat they will be like they are jealousy of other people they are jealousy of other people's success whereas the people who have a growth mindset they see the success of other people as an encouragement as a motivation they are being motivated okay this was this and this did so let me do my part let me improve i know it will take me time but finally i will be there this is their mentality they are encouraged they are motivated the thing is the fixed mindset people they are so judgmental they will punish the wrongdoers we are human beings sometimes we do mistakes and this kind of people they are fast to point accusing finger to you they are fast people to judge you they are fast people to punish you whereas the people with the growth mindset what they will do these are the people who they will call you they will encourage you they will motivate you they will speak to you they will educate you they will compromise and give you second chances another point is how they solve challenges a person with a fixed mindset these are the people who are scared to face a problem they fear to face something new they fear to try whereas the people with a growth mindset these are the people who wants challenges because they know after i solve a challenge after i solve a problem what happens i improve my mindset they know that problems are there to shape their character problems are there to discipline them if you want to make money solve problems we are in 2023 we are not in 1993 we are in 2023 In 2023 we no longer chase money we attract money you make money by the problems you choose to solve if the problem you're solving is affecting more than 1 million people you are likely to make more money and if the problem you're solving is affecting 5 people the chances of you getting money is quite less but if the problem you're solving is affecting a lot of people by so that's how you'll get a lot of money because for an example the person who invented lights the bulb lights this guy was scared of the darkness he hated dark so 
he was trying to do something he was trying to solve the problem until he came up with invention when you look at guys like mark zuckerberg when he came up with facebook in 2006 he was trying to solve a problem when you look men like the Wright brothers they were trying to solve a problem when they came up with an invention of an aeroplane today we are enjoying the services of the aeroplane but when they came up with this invention they were solving a problem so the more you solve the problem the more you're likely to earn you earn when you solve problems not chasing money so be honest with yourself ask yourself what problem am i really solving is this problem helping me to earn an income I, another point is knowledge no knowledge is a waste no knowledge is a waste before you buy a new show please buy a new book visit a library visit a bookshop visit seminars get into conferences go to church meet people keep on learning keep on being being motivated because people they will isolate you once they find that your life is not adding value to them you understand this because life is a knowledge dependent your life today is at the mercy of what you know and having a mentality that you've finished school you don't need to learn you don't need to do what all those things are foolish go there find books some of you the things you are watching the things you are reading the things you're putting your ears to listen and the things you want in life they don't resonate they don't resemble they are two different things because for real if you manage to eat three meals a day i mean breakfast lunch and supper you should also manage to read even three pages a day three pages of a book a day because we all know food is for the stomach and books are for the head you are busy feeding your stomach but you forget your head because some of you the things you are watching the things you are listening into the things you are reading and the things you are looking for they don't resonate they are two different things and that's why we are in pain today because the things we are allowing into our minds that later they become habits affect our mindset because each and every time you give your mind information this information it fills your conscious mind and once it fills your conscious mind it later come into your subconscious mind what the conscious mind is a larger part of the mind but the smaller part is called the subconscious mind which is responsible in controlling the conscious mind and once you feed your mind with a lot of information these informations they get into your subconscious mind and what happen next once they get into your subconscious mind they form habits but if you feed your conscience with gossip with irrelevant information what will happen your speaking will resonate to your thinking today you can look at a person and tell their iq you can look at a person and tell their level of thinking by the way they speak your singleness today it has an explanation why because men once they find out that your life is not adding value to theirs they will form a place and isolate you there until they see you are now waking up that is the time they will need you so in all you are getting get knowledge because the life we are living in is a knowledge dependent thank you for watching till the end and if this video has given you value consider subscribing down below and hit the notification bell for you to be notified for the next time we upload our next video it's all love i wish you a wonderful day inshallah